Now, the NFL Draft is just under a month away, and we will have all the coverage you could want, including, of course, our live NFL Draft coverage. So if you haven't already, now is the time to subscribe. On today's show, we will break down ESPN's Mike Tannenbaum's NFL Mock Draft. Now, this Mock Draft is what he would do, uh, not what he thinks NFL teams will do. He did this last year and had Hendon Hooker going super early, saying he thought no one else knew about him, which was wildly offensive, frankly, uh, and also wrong. So let's break down what Tan and Bob had. Nothing crazy at number one overall. Caleb Williams off the board to the Chicago Bears. This is what most people will do and the expectation of what happens. Drake May, number two overall here. So again, we're, we're on a, a fine track. You know, nothing too concerning from that perspective. Um, makes sense for the commanders. Jaden Daniels going number three to the Patriots. Again, that certainly makes sense. You're taking care of business as you'd expect. Nothing surprising. QB's probably going to go one, two, three. Maybe not in that order, but that's very expected. This is not. Arizona takes J.J. McCarthy, number four overall. How about that? Uh, so you're moving on from Kyler Murray in a little bit. We'll get to that one right there. And taking McCarthy at number four, and the Cardinals would, this would stun everybody because nobody's floated this. My, uh, my theory of, you know, Cardinals going to number one overall pick and taking Williams ended up not materializing. I don't think they're going to take McCarthy at four. And I don't think that's a good idea for Arizona either. So prediction time. Who will draft J.J. McCarthy? I don't think it's Arizona. It's maybe somebody in the top 12 picks. Who do you think it is? Sound off in, at the pinned comment of today's video. The ad comes. Great. Ignore the ad. Walt plays, whatever. Go down and vote where you think McCarthy ends up going. Number five, Joe Alt, the Chargers. I, I would probably advise Marvin Harrison Jr. here, uh, even though it's not a Michigan man, or trade down if the team wants to come get uh, you know, McCarthy or something there. But offensive line help, number one tackle, I at least get it. Not Marvin Harrison. Goes number six overall here, Malik Neighbors. Uh, Frankly, Tannenbaum thinks Neighbors is a better prospect. I know he's not alone in that, and I love Neighbors too. He's my number two overall player this year, by the way. I don't know if I take him over, over Marvin Harrison Jr. Another surprise, J.C. Latham at number seven to Alabama. I do not have him as my number two tackle. He's actually my number five tackle. Uh, seven is early for me. Uh as a right tackle option, which Tennessee then also doesn't have a left tackle. So I'm not, I'm not too sure what the plan is. Like, Tannenbaum mentioned they cut Andre Dillard. So I'm targeting a right tackle to replace my left tackle. That's kind of weird. Number eight, Dallas Turner. This is actually a very popular mock draft pick right now. And there was plenty of buzz on that at the combine. So that's, that's fine and, and valid from that perspective. Number nine is Marvin Harrison Jr., you know how unbelievable this would be for, for Chicago? The pipe dream of Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. comes to fruition? Is Tannenbaum secretly a Bears fan? People are talking. Number 10, Olu Fashanu, or Fashanu uh, to the Jets. I think they might like Taliesse Fuaga, but I, I, I like uh, Fashanu. I, I think he's a very talented tackle prospect. In the end, I think Alt caught him this season. But having him as your left tackle of the future at number 10 overall, I don't think is a bad thing at all for the Jets. We'll get to number 11 and a surprise with that pick. But first, today's show is made possible by GameTime. You can download the GameTime app, GameTime.co, and use promo code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. They're trying to save you money. For your next big event, whether that's sporting, you know, NBA, MLB, maybe some March Madness, Sweet 16, Elite Eight, or even Final Four tickets, or concerts, comedy, theater, etc. 
Game time has it all for you. The game, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Uh, I like their zone deals. You can't always find them, but when you do, oh, it's a no-brainer. Uh, you pick the section. Game time picks the seats. It's the seats for big time savings because who cares if you're sitting in seat seven or seat 14? Potato, potato in the end, right? So download the game time app. And use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase once you create your account. The terms apply, conditions as well. Use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off that first purchase. Download Game Time today for last minute tickets at the lowest price, all guaranteed. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. A trade of Kyler Murray. During the NFL draft, uh, this one certainly would be a pretty big shocker there. The Vikings get Kyler Murray, Arizona gets the number 11 overall pick, and they send a third round pick as well to Minnesota as the Vikings find their, their new, in theory, franchise quarterback, and Arizona moves on from Murray, and they're taking a, looking at my notes here, a saving $5 million in cap space in the process, so that's fine, I suppose. Got a very large cap hit, by the way, this year. Is Kyler Murray a franchise quarterback? Slight semi-related draft question there. Why for yes and for no in the comments section. Now, rather than take Roma Dunze here, which I was surprised by, uh, Arizona goes Quinion Mitchell, who I like. I think he's in the running for the number one cornerback option. Um, you're getting the second defensive player off the board. You moved on from Murray, so it's fine. I, I would have gone Roma Dunze there. Number 12, Denver takes Bo Nix, the quarterback. Um, I, I don't love Bo Nix. He has the accuracy for the most part. The arm strength is solid. It's that everything was short. Like, that, that was a fake offense relative to the NFL. I don't know how we would actually fit in Sean Payton's offense. Um, I think there's good backup stuff. Way better than the, the neighbor was at Oregon. But I don't know about top 12 pick. Raiders at 13. Felice Fuaga. I love it. Um, you replace Jermaine Illuminor with a, with a hulking, monstrous right tackle. Great pick. The Saints at 14. You get Roma Dunze. I don't think he should fall out of the top 10, frankly. To get him at 14, it's an awesome pick by these Saints. Colts at 15, they get a number one corner, Terrion Arnold. So we are very much on a kind of like, this all makes sense mock draft here. Uh, no complaints about that one. Troy Fatanu out of Washington. Now, Seattle's never valued guards, but they do need one. And given his ties to the current coaching staff, the OC, the own lie coach, coached him at Washington. I think it makes a ton of sense if Seattle's wanted to ignore their previous guard value. He could play tackle, to be clear. He has the arm length for it. The Jags take Brian Thomas Jr. at LSU. Here's your Calvin Ridley replacement. Um, I think it might be better year one than Gabe Davis uh, would certainly be. And here and help Trevor Lawrence, too. Good. Amarius Mims. That's, this is one of my guys. I, he has not played much, I know. When he's played, he's been good, though. It's, he's not, it's not that he's raw. Like, it needs like massive corrections in his form and everything. Oh, he needs some tweaks, too, to be, to be clear. He hasn't played much. He can give him some time to, to learn behind Trent Brown, too. I would love that pick for Cincinnati. Michael Penix, number 19 overall to the L.A. Rams. Now, what I find funny here is part of his argument for the Vikings trading for Kyler Murray is that he didn't think Michael Penix, he thought it was too early for Michael Penix at number 11, but 19's not too early. You know, if you're going to go top 12, you can't go top 12, but you can go top 20? Kind of feels like some splitting of the hairs a little bit there. Because he does fit the McVay offense well, which means also fit the O'Connell offense well. I'm not taking him round one. I, 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 as a pure pocket passer, there is a lot to like here. But you need, I think you need the ability to move off, off, of your, off of your spot, do some out of structure stuff, and I worry about Penix in that area. I think he can be a really good in, in, in the right fit. I think it limits his, his upside in the end. And I, I, I don't have a round one, round one grade on him, period. 
This would be six quarterbacks in the top 20, which would be insane. How many QBs do you think go in round one? Sound off in the comments. 20th, Steelers take A.D. Mitchell out of Texas. Man, Mitchell and Pickens, some big boys on the outside who can run. That sure is fun. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson to the Dolphins here. I, I, I'm not sure who you're going to put a guard, JPJ or Aaron Brewer. I think that could certainly work there. And I, I do like a lot of what Jackson Powers Johnson brings. Did you forget about Brock Bowers? Maybe you did. Here he goes, 22nd overall to the Eagles, because uh, you're going to run two tight end personnel nonstop with Bowers and Dallas Goddard. Um, it's not a need. This on, I'll be honest here. This feels like a, ah, shoot, I got to find a spot for him pick. That's what it feels like to me. Number 23, Johnny Newton out of Illinois. Okay, I don't mind that one. I actually like Newton's game a lot. Uh, I do have him myself over Byron Murphy out of Texas. I might be alone on that or not the consensus. That's fine. Murphy's a great prospect, too. He goes here to the Dallas Cowboys. I think both those players should be first-round picks. Tyler Guyton to the Green Bay Packers. Seen that one mocked uh, plenty of times there in the end. I, I think Guyton, yeah, it's interesting. It's, Tannenbaum says he's a plug-and-play guy day one at left tackle, and I'm not sure he is. I think you could, but I wouldn't feel overly confident in it because he was a right tackle mostly at uh, ESPN, or at Oklahoma. Got ahead of myself with the ESPN box. Cooper DeGene to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here, number 26 overall. There's some, you know, corner safety blend in there. I don't know if he's good enough in man. That's a concern for me, but I know he's good in zone. Uh, curious how that would fit in with Todd Bowles, but the, but the versatility fits in pretty well. Now Arizona gets their wide receiver, Lad McConkey out of Georgia. I like his game a lot. Um, if anyone tries to comp him to like a Wes Welker or Julian Edelman, they are telling on themselves. He is here on a 4-3-9. He is not that shifty, quick slot receiver. He's actually very uh, athletic and, and dynamic from that perspective with a great broad jump too. Um, he can do inside or outside stuff, and Arizona needs some more receiver. They've spent a lot of picks on wide receiver. Hasn't paid off yet. Xavier Worthy to the Bills. I think it's fun. Uh, speedy vertical threat, right? I think offers some return value potentially as well. Skinny guy, but you know, they're, they're, there's worse ideas than Josh Allen moonshots to Xavier Worthy outrun everybody. Uh, Lions, they have to do a lot to out of UCLA. Medicals are the red flags here. It makes a bit of an unknown of where he actually goes in this year's draft. Um, I think adding some depth at edge rusher makes a lot of sense there. Same with Jared Verse at 30. So some slides here um, you know, from that perspective. Jared Verse goes 30th to the Baltimore Ravens with Van Noy and Clowney as of filming both free agents. They like those power five players in round one. The big surprise back in around one year, Brayden Fisk out of Florida State. Really great athlete. I, the length is going to cause issues. It, it is. Um, but there's a lot to like here. I don't like him 31. I like him a lot more like at 61 or even a bit earlier. Jordan Morgan, a left tackle option for the Chiefs. The length is a concern here too. Sub 33 inches. He won't be a tackle for everybody. Might, some teams might view him as a guard. Chiefs might be willing to overlook that in theory. So grade the Mike Tannenbaum mock draft. You, you, it's not mine, so you can be as critical as you want to be. A, B, C, D, or F in the comments section. A couple notable prospects left out of this mock draft. I like Nate Wiggins a lot out of Clemson. Skinny but very fast corner. Chop Robinson, the edges kind of fell in his mocks. So that's not a huge surprise to me that he got left out. Same with Darius Robinson of Missouri. Kool-Aid McKinstry, he checked off the speed box for me. I'm not panicking there like I kind of was a bit anxious about there. I think he's being over, uh, undervalued. Same with Graham Barton out of Duke. Uh, I think there's a lot of position flex there. I think he ends up going in round one or at least goes off the board early in round two.